All right, I think we're ready to start. So first, I want to thank everyone for attending today's uh, presentation on what to expect in the mortgage process from application to closing. Oh, sorry, it looks like I forgot the camera. So uh, let's talk a little bit uh, about myself. Hopefully everybody can see everything now. So a little about myself. I'm originally from New York, New York, if you can't tell by my accent. I originally started in the uh, finance industry in the year 2000, and I moved to Florida in 2001. And over my time here, I've been able to help many families obtain housings, uh, housing and homes over these last few years. And the things that I'm gonna share here today I think are pretty powerful. They're gonna help you get through the process a lot easier. So Florida Credit Union has six mortgage, originator, uh, six mortgage originators ready to help you. And we have people physically located right now in Gainesville, Ocala, Lake City, and DeLand. But if you're not located in one of those cities, we, we can help anybody located in any one of our 48 counties that we cover. If you'd like to know a little bit more about your local mortgage loan officer, you can go to flcu.org forward slash mortgage team, and you can find out a little bit more about who you might be working with. Um, fun little fact, we've actually been in your neighborhood since 1954. Today, we're going to cover several topics, including what does Florida credit look for in a mortgage application? How do I apply for a mortgage application with Florida Credit Union? What happens after you get pre-approved? What documents will you need to provide during the loan process? What to expect during the loan origination process? And uh, I guess I'll start by talking about what my role is. So as the mortgage loan officer, my job will be to take your initial application. In addition to that, I'll serve as the point of contact throughout the entire mortgage process from beginning to end. During the, more, during the mortgage process, I'm going to help determine what options are available to you based off of your specific circumstances. And if for some reason you're not able to get approved, we'll help you uh, find what actions you need to take to get approved. Maybe you don't have enough cash to close right now. Maybe there's some kind of credit issue. Just because you're not approved this first time doesn't mean we're just going to let you go. We're going to try to find a way to get the loan approved. So what does a lender look for in a mortgage application? And these things are going to be pretty industry, industry standard. The first thing we're going to look at is your income and job history. So where do you work? How long have you worked there? How much do you make? We're going to take a look at your credit score and your credit report. And, and I'm, I'm, going to, I'm going to tell you something about that. Your credit score does not necessarily determine whether or not you are approved for the loan. And I'm gonna say that a second time because this is very important. With Florida Credit Union, your credit score does not determine whether or not you are approved for a loan. We simply use it to determine what we call pricing or the interest rate. We'll take a look at several things before we make that decision. Another thing we're gonna take a look at is something called your debt to income ratio. And to say that in simpler terms, what we're gonna take a look at are all of your monthly debts that you have, any kind, any kind of bills, credit cards, auto loans. And we're gonna take a look at the mortgage that you're projected to have on top of that. Then we're gonna compare that to your monthly income. And that's how we're gonna get your debt to income ratio. And then finally, we're gonna take a look at your assets and reserves. And that's money that you have in the bank, uh, potentially any, any other kind of money that you might have, stocks, bonds, retirement. We're gonna take a look at all of that and we're gonna use that to determine what kind of loan you can get and whether or not we can approve you. So when you're applying for a loan, here are some other upfront costs that you may wanna consider. One thing you may wanna think about is an earnest money deposit. This is a sum of money included with your purchase that shows the seller that you're a serious buyer. Now this money that you give them is typically gonna be uh, a contribution towards the down payment. So that money that you're giving them, uh, it, it doesn't go away. You're not just giving them the money. That's going to be contributed. That's going to contribute towards your down payment. Another thing that you may have to come out of pocket for are, and is an inspection. Depending on what type of home that you're getting and the loan program, 
they may ask for an inspection. Um, closing costs, right? Closing costs are all the fees beyond the down payment that you're going to have to pay to get the loan done. And then I like to say every loan is different. So there can be other things that I may not have spoke about that you may have to come for out of pocket in order to get the loan closed. So how do I apply for a mortgage with Florida Credit Union? First thing you're going to want to do is follow, fill out an application. You can do that by going to our website, calling us on the phone, or visiting a branch. We'll meet with you to review the application. And once that's done, hopefully, we'll receive a pre-approval. So what is a pre-approval? A pre-approval is a commitment from the, credit union, from the credit union stating the potential loan amount that you can get. And you might be thinking, why do I need a pre-approval? Well, here's why. First of all, pre-approvals are quick, fast, easy, and they're free. They don't cost you a penny. They let you know what you can afford. And more importantly, many realtors or sellers will not even accept an offer to buy a home unless you have that pre-approval in hand. So what happens after you are pre-approved? You're gonna to wanna to work with your realtor to find the property. Once you found the property that you like, you're gonna make an offer and if it's accepted, they're gonna give you something called a purchase contract, which just states that you and the seller have agreed on a price and that you're gonna buy the property. So once we got that, we're gonna start requesting some documents for you. And once again, these are fairly industry standard things that we're gonna need. We will need copies of your driver's license and your social security card for anyone that's on the loan. We're gonna request 30 days of consecutive pay stubs for each borrower. We're also gonna ask for W-2s, spanning the two most recent years for anyone on the loan. And then we'll ask you for a homeowner's insurance quote and a survey. Now with the survey, if the seller's able to give you one, that may be a cost savings there. And we will, we, will, we will be more than happy to review it for you. And if we can use it, then we've potentially saved you some money. If not, then that may be something you have to pay for out of pocket. So once we have all of that, you go into what is called processing. Now, what is loan processing and what, what is the loan processing and what does the processor do? So loan processing is a stage of the loan when you're personal financial information that was collected is now verified. The loan processor is gonna organize your documents for the underwriter to review. And the loan processor is gonna be the link between you, your loan officer, and the underwriter. Now that brings me to next, what is an underwriter? The underwriter is the expert that's gonna take a look at your loan in depth. They're gonna go through all the information that you provided. They're gonna take a look at your financial background and they're gonna use that to make the final decision on your mortgage approval. So, once you're in processing, these are the things that your processor is typically gonna be responsible for. They're gonna be responsible for ordering your appraisal and the title insurance. They're gonna lock your interest rate because in case you do not know, your interest rate is not locked until you get into processing which means we've had a commitment, you've got me that purchase contract and all those other documents that I requested previously. The processor also is responsible for making sure that your loan stays on track to close on time. And then finally, they will be responsible for scheduling the appointment for closing with the title company. So once they've done that and the underwriter has given you the final approval, they're gonna issue you something called the clear to close. And that simply means that it's alerting everyone in the loan process that it is okay to schedule your closing and issue you something called the closing disclosure. This closing disclosure has to be issued prior to you closing on the loan. Your closing disclosure is gonna tell you everything you need to know about that loan. It will list your monthly payment, the down payment that you're making, the interest rate that you're being charged, and it'll go over any closing costs that you have to pay in order to get the loan closed. Now, I have a nice little example of a closing disclosure here. I'm not gonna go too much in depth about what's on it, but as you can see, it's fairly easy to read, and all the information on here is generally written so that it's easy to digest and make sense to you. 
They should not look too different from the documents that you've received previously. And when you get it, you can always give your loan officer or your processor a ring, and they'll be happy to go over with you in a little more detail. So once you've signed and returned that closing disclosure, we'll be ready to go ahead and schedule the closing. So here are the things that you can expect to do on closing date. You're gonna need to bring a valid photo ID. You're gonna need to bring a check for the closing cost and the title company is gonna let you know how they want that money. Sometimes they want you to wire it. Sometimes they want you to bring a check, but they'll let you know their preferred method of getting it. And I like to say, you wanna bring a well-rested hand because you're gonna be signing lots of documents on that day. Now the closing will occur at the title company that was selected at the beginning of the loan process. And they're gonna get your loan documents, they're gonna present them and explain them to you one more time at closing for your review and for you to sign. And once you've done that, congratulations, you're a homeowner. You sign that, they'll give you the keys and, uh, and, and you're ready to move into the house. So before we get to the questions, I wanna talk about some resources that you can find on our website. First thing that, that I found very helpful, if you haven't had a chance yet, go on to flcu.org and you can look at the road to home ownership. A lot of great information on there. In addition to that, if maybe you're not looking to buy a new home, maybe you're trying to refinance, once again, something we can help with. Another question that I get frequently, uh, all the time people ask me this, Robert, how much can I afford for for a mortgage? I, I don't know, right? I've never bought a home before, or I don't know what with today's rates I can afford. If you go onto Florida Credit, flcu.org, onto the Florida Credit Union website, there's a calculator there, and it'll ask you a couple of basic questions, and it'll give you a great idea of how much you may be able to afford. And then finally, there's me, right? If you have any questions, um, you can ask them now, but maybe you think of something after we're done today and you wanna get a little more information. You can, if you pull out your phone right now, you can actually scan this QR code and it'll take you right to me on the Florida Credit Union website. Or you can also find me by going to flcu.org forward slash Robert Velez. All right, um, and if you're interested in learning more, um, once again, you can, you can scan the QR code or go right into the website. I think right now we are ready for some questions. Let's see what we have. Okay, so right now I see a question that's asking, are there any other ways to apply? And uh, yeah, and I'll go over that again. We talked about it briefly, but there are several different ways you can apply. Uh, first option is going right to the website, flcu.org. You'll navigate to the mortgage section and you can click on any of our team members and there'll be a link to the application there. Option number two is you're more than welcome to call in on the phone. We can take an application uh, over the phone if that's your preference. And finally, if you send us an email or if, you, if you'd like to, we can actually email you a link to the application and we can get it done that way. Let's see if we have any more questions. Um, Let's see, do I have to apply in person? Uh, I think we answered that. Can you elaborate on what's included in the closing cost? Uh, I won't get into that too much because it's going to really depend on what kind of loan product that you're that you're getting. Um, it, that's a great question, um, and since since it can vary so much, I would prefer probably to do that one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. Let's see, uh, how long is the process typically from application to closing? That is a great question. That can vary quite a bit depending on several different factors. Generally, we're looking at anywhere from 28 to 35 days on average. Um, it can be quicker, it can be longer, depending on several factors, um, where you live, how long it might take the appraisal or the title work to get done. Um, that can vary, but generally you're looking somewhere 28 to 35 days on average. Let's see, what is a title company? Uh, what do they do? 
that, that's a pretty good that's a pretty good question. Um, and, and and I won't get into too much details, but essentially the title company's job is to make sure that the title transfers from the owner of the existing home to you without any issues. That when you get it, you own it without any other uh, things popping up as far as debts or liabilities that are, may be attached to the property. Let's see, any other questions out there? It looks like that might be, oh, is there a minimum credit score to apply? There is no minimum credit score um, to apply for a loan here. Like I said, your credit score does not determine whether or not you get approved. It can determine what programs you're eligible for, but there's no minimum credit score required to get a loan with us, which is one of the great benefits of being with the credit union. Do you currently have any mortgage loan specials? We have quite a few mortgage loan specials right now. I can't say how long these are gonna last for, but we have a couple of specials. We have one special right now where we would help contribute towards the closing cost to help you get that, to help you get the loan uh, closed. Um, I'm not gonna elaborate on it too much. Um, if that's something you're looking for, definitely feel free to reach out to me and we'll discuss it uh, for your individual circumstance. Let's see. And it looks like that's it for our questions. I want to once again, thank everyone for attending today's seminar and uh, very happy that you attended. Hopefully you found the information today useful. And if you can think of anything else at a later time, feel free to reach out to me either by phone, online or by email. Once again, thank you very much. Have a great day.